bright duty every student matters we start with solution as i told you that solutions are homogeneous mixtures it is an example of a type of mixture which is called solution now what is a solution solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances that means you will have two or more components and what are the components they are the solute and the solvent so there are two basic components in case of solution one is the solute the other is the solvent now the question is what is solute what is solvent let us try and understand what are they in case of solute solute means that which is present in a small quantity substance present in small quantity okay whereas in case of solvent solvent is always present in bulk so these two together would make a solution now let us take few examples to understand what is a solution now if i take salt as my solute and water as the solvent then you know that salt will completely dissolve in water and thus it will make a solution which we term it as salt solution and what are its characteristics you will see that you will not be able to distinguish between the particles of the two components so what happens in this case that when you take a glass of water and you add so there is water in it in the glass so and we know that liquid has got intermolecular spaces and then when you are adding salt then this salt will go and occupy the space available and thus get uniformly distributed and that is the reason why we term solution as homogeneous mixtures now what are the properties of solution the first property of solution that solution is a homogeneous mixture the second property is the size of the particles are very very small they are in the range of 10 to the power minus 9 meters that is 1 nanometer in diameter so you know because of the minute size of these particles you cannot see them through your naked eyes so if you take a glass of lemonade you take a glass of sugar solution or salt solution you will not be able to identify the particles of the solution because they are very very minute and how minute they are of the range of 1 nanometer or 10 to the power minus 9 meters the next property of solution is that they do not scatter beam of light or in otherwise no tindal effect now what is tindal effect tindal effect means that when you take a glass of any substance in the liquid form and you allow a beam of light to for, pass through it then you tend to see the beam of light through it clearly that is called as the scattering of light is called as tindal effect you know it is very odd. properly seen in case of suppose you have a room and you have a small hole through which the sunlight enters so you would see a beam of light and that is due to the scattering of light by the particles of the air and we term it as tindal effect okay so in case of solution solution do not scatter beam of light that is they do not show tindal effect the next point is solute particles cannot be separated by filtration that obviously it had to happen because the size of the particles are so minute so when you take a filter paper and try to separate them through filtration it is not possible because these small particles passes through the pores of the filter paper and thus cannot be separated so a solution cannot be separated through the process of filtration the next point the solute particles do not settle down when left undisturbed that means they are stable so if you take a glass of lemonade 
you take a glass of salt solution sugar solution and you leave it even for an hour you will see no sediment the particles of the solute will be uniformly distributed throughout the solvent and there would be no variation so i hope this is clear but what is a solution it is a homogeneous mixture it has got two components which is a solute and a solvent and we have also seen the different properties of a solution fine now next let's go to the next one now solutions are again of three types what are they they are unsaturated saturated and supersaturated let us do an activity to study about saturated and unsaturated solution the materials required Two hundred cc beakers, common salt, potassium nitrate, Bunsen burner, water, glass terror, and a teaspoon. The method of the activity. Take 200 cc beakers and pour 50 cc of water in each of them. Label the beakers A and B. In the beaker A, pour one level teaspoon of common salt, and in the beaker B, pour one level teaspoon of potassium nitrate. Stir the contents well. When the salts dissolve in both of the beakers, add one level teaspoon of common salt and potassium nitrate to each of the beakers and stir well. Continue adding the common salt and potassium nitrate to their respective beakers till they stop dissolving. You would notice that more teaspoon full of potassium nitrate are required as compared to common salt. This shows that different substances have different solubilities in the same amount of water. Now heat each beaker separately and add more amount of substances that is solutes till the water is about to boil and the salts starts dissolving. You would notice that on heating, more amount of the solutes dissolve in the same amount of water till a stage is reached when they stop dissolving. Allow the contents of both beakers to cool for a few hours. After a few hours, you would notice that crystals of solutes settle at the base of liquid. What is the conclusion that we can draw? From this, we can conclude that the solubility of the solute decreases with the fall in temperature. The extra solute, which dissolves at a higher temperature, comes out of its solution in the form of crystals on lowering the temperature. So, I suppose this is clear that solution can also be unsaturated, saturated, supersaturated, depending on the amount of solute present in the solvent. Next, the question is that the amount of solute that is dissolving in the solvent would depend on the solubility. Now, what is solubility? Solubility is the amount of solute present in the saturated solution at this temperature is called its solubility. That means it is the capacity of the solute to dissolve in the solvent at a particular temperature that is termed as solubility. Okay, 